Yeah, we lost again. Last season, Farmingdale State College faced their conference rival, Fairfield University, in the AAU College Hockey National Championships in one of the most highly anticipated matchups of the tournament. It was a hard-fought battle with emotions running high, but when the final buzzer sounded, it was Fairfield standing victorious, sealing Farmingdale's fate at 4-2. And yeah, it stung. But that's the thing about hockey. It's not just a game. It's a roller coaster of emotions. And for Farmingdale, it was a bitter taste of defeat that fuels a burning desire for redemption. Before the season opener against Maris, there was a pivotal announcement that echoed through the Farmingdale locker room. John McCann was named the team's captain. Johnny, you notice something? Oh, oh. Appreciate it. Thank you. Congratulations. Known for his unwavering dedication and being a very vocal leader on and off the ice, McCann's captaincy is a testament to his ability to inspire and motivate his teammates. His leadership qualities are a driving force behind the Rams' unity and determination. Can you share any of your personal goals for the upcoming season? Uh, anything I got to do to help my team win, that's all that matters to me. How excited are you for the upcoming season? Very excited. I feel like this is going to be a great year for us. And so it begins on a crisp September night at the McCann Ice Arena in Poughkeepsie, New York. The Farmingdale State Rams step onto the ice for their season opener against a cross-league team. For the rookies like Devin Quinones, Brandon Hughes, and Dylan Smith, it's a moment filled with excitement and anticipation. The nerves may be running high, but they know they have the support of their teammates and the Farmingdale hockey family. All right, Duffy said in the text message, or the group me message, that's really what it's all about. All right, freshman, you spent your whole careers playing travel, doing your whole thing. You're finally here. This is your first time putting on the jersey, okay? And then some of you have spent your whole careers in college here, and this might be the last time you're putting on your jersey for a season opener. All right, it's a long road, all right, and it's a journey. And along that journey, I want you to think of this season as a mountain. Okay, and on that mountain, we're at base camp. So from spring to summer to Lake Placid to, to, to September, we've been at the bottom of that mountain, nice and flat, working ourselves, getting ready, getting prepped to climb that mountain. Okay, and that mountain, you're gonna have checkpoints. And each checkpoint's gonna be a game. Our ultimate goal is to get to the top, but you can't get to the top without working each step of the way. And today is just that first step that first step of the mountain to get your way up, all right? I want you guys to have fun. I want you guys to play hard. I want you guys to enjoy yourselves. Everybody in this room has a story. Everybody came from somewhere. Everybody had their own background, okay? But all those stories come together tonight in this room. And we finally mesh together. We put on that jersey for once. It's not who's in white, who's in green, who's in black. Tonight, we're all in black and we're going against Marist. Okay? We've never played them before in program history that I know of. All right, we're on the road, nice little place. Ice looks great, glass, the lighting, everything's clean. The only thing we have to do now is worry about our shifts, worry about being good teammates, and doing what we're supposed to do. That puck drops, if it's your first shift, get hit or, or, take, or throw a hit, right? And then you hound. You go hard, you get off, you sit down on the bench. If you're next up, you stand. All right, so if you're not up next, you're down, and we get ready to go. You cheer for your teammates, someone makes a good play, someone throws a big hit, it's rowdy on the bench. You stay into the game mentally, physically, emotionally. And we do one shift at a time, and we take it to these boys, okay? We've got a lot of rookies in this room. Someone scores a goal, it's there fucking first, somebody grab that puck. That's how it works. Get that puck. 
I want to make sure that these guys have to go fucking buy some new pucks after this game. I want to be taping up a lot of pucks for first, okay? So make sure you play good, you play hard, you come out, you have a good, quick, clean warm-up. Any questions, we'll talk between periods. But hey, boys, it's fucking showtime here, okay? Let's go. Let's be ready to fucking rock. I'm Eric, my name is Eric Immel. I'm a junior here. We're going to show them how much speed we got and take it to them, and we're going to win. My name is Tim Duffy, and I'm a junior here at Farmingdale State. I think it'll be a really good opponent. Um, not in our league, different league, uh, so it'll be interesting to see how that matchup goes. But like I said, I think we got the team, we got the heart to really uh, take it to anyone. I just want to win. Anything less than that is a failure. Rams wasted no time making a statement. It was a night of first as rookies Nick Ciani, Luciano Signoretti, and Michael Larico lit the lamp for their first collegiate goals. The newcomers wasted no time leaving their mark, and the Rams rolled to a convincing 6-2 victory, setting the tone for the season ahead. I'm Mike Larico, I'm a freshman, and I play at Farmingdale State College. Thought the first game went well. We got all four lines involved scoring, so that was good to see. Um, watching the game back, you definitely saw we have more opportunities. So we have them again in two weeks, so looking forward to that game. How did you feel when you scored your first goal? Definitely uh, a good feeling, kind of like the monkey off the bat, get the first one out of the way. Um, you know, it's kind of, it was, it was good to get out of the way. Fat ass. Yeah, but. Yeah, fat butt, so it makes sense. Uh, the Rams are hitting the road once again, this time heading to the Ice Hutch in Mount Vernon, New York. It's a familiar battle against Fordham University, a team with a history of intense matchups. Um, all right, listen up, okay? We got to stick to our game plan, all right? If I know anything about Fordham, I have a feeling they're going to come out. They're going to look to trap. A lot of times they'll go into a 1-2-2, two, two, especially if it's not their uh, top line. All right, this goalie that we're playing against, uh, Nationals put on a fucking show. All right, I think versus Alabama, he had like 50 or 60 shots, and uh, they, they almost, I think they either tied or whatever happened. So when he's hot, he's hot. But if you're in front of the net, banging in rebounds all day long, sticks and bodies in front, it's going to make it a lot harder for him. All right, straight shots with no traffic ain't going to work. Try to do a one-man show, try to skate around everybody, one on five ain't going to work. All right, but if you move the puck like we're supposed to, you've been playing with your lines for a little bit now, the chem is there. All right, use it and use it to your advantage. Let's play hard, let's play mean, let's play the right way, okay? We know what we're supposed to do. Johnny, you're starting, Murray, okay? And Kyle, in the pipes, baby. Let's go, all right? See you on the ice. Adding to the mix, last Sunday, Farmingdale's Division II team displayed their power rests with a victory at the Ice Hutch, showcasing the depth of talent within the Rams hockey program. As the Rams prepare to face off once more, the battle is alive and well, which promises intense action and unforgettable moments on the ice. The game got off to a lightning fast start when Luciano Signoretti found the back of the net just 10 seconds into the game. A stunning opening statement by Signoretti that put Farmingdale on the board. Fordham, determined to avenge past defeats, responded with equal vigor. The tension on the ice was palpable as both teams exchanged shots and Fordham's goalie constantly disrupting their offensive plays. All right, kind of saw how shit was going down Thursday at practice, it kind of carried over here. 
I uh, scored 10 seconds into the fucking game and forgot about, you know, the other 59 and change minutes, okay? Can't happen, all right? Defensive zone, I don't think was bad. I only really had five D-zone turnovers. They got one on the power play and then one back door. But offensively, I think we're doing a lot of standing around. We've been working on that breakout drill at the end of practice, and I sent three versus five, and you guys hound like fucking animals. Now it's in a game, five on five, and we're watching one guy do all the work, two guys are flat-footed, and by the time you go to read the play, it's too late. All right, if one guy works his bag off and he's in there hounding, second guy's gotta get in there and help out, third guy's gotta be hot. If the defense does pinch, third guy's gotta pop out. It's some simple shit. All right, but it's gut check time. All right, they're backing up. They're building a house in front of the net. They got five guys clogging in the middle. So when we talk about all these super duper fancy plays, it comes down to just getting in front of the net, tip screen rebounds and dirty goals. Stay out of the bullshit penalty, stay away from the box. I know they're gonna fucking chirp and they're gonna do their shit, just keep going, all right? Plenty of hockey left, 40 minutes left. We're gonna keep rolling, doing our thing, but you gotta stay in the game. Stay positive on the bench, and when your number's called, make it fucking count. That's all I got. 40 miles, let's go. As their game progressed, the Rams found themselves with a golden opportunity. A five on three power play lasting over a minute and a half. It was a moment that could have shifted the tide in their favor, but they were unable to capitalize on this crucial advantage. The game reached its climax in overtime where both teams battled fiercely. Unfortunately, Farmingdale suffered a heartbreaking loss when Fordham secured the victory with a rebound goal. Get out of the way, need to. Take some of the granted, you look past the team for one second, and look what happens. Bottom line is you're back to work on Tuesday. Don't be looking past Friday because you beat Maris. I'll tell you what, one game at a time, right? Can't get to the top of the mountain forgetting about Fordham. Because now you're right back down, Peg. Get your shit. Do what you have to do, get home safe, back to work on Tuesday. This game marked by both missed opportunities and moments of resilience on the ice, ultimately ending with Fordham securing the win in overtime. In the heart of East Meadow, New York, the Rams are back on their home ice and the atmosphere is electric. It's the home opener, and anticipation is running high as the team faces Marist College, a familiar foe who they defeated 6-2 just a couple weeks ago. All right, fellas, listen up, okay? Uh, we're coming off two games on the road, all right, where we got to play together as a team, but there's always something special about coming home, and especially tonight when you're playing in your opening night, okay? Whether it's your first time putting on the home jersey or you've had a couple of seasons doing it here before, okay? Home opener is truly something special. And uh, I look out in that lobby and I see a bunch of alumni, guys that have worn the jersey before you guys and have, have finished that time. And it's good to see. Guys that, I'm talking guys from 10 years ago and guys from last year. So in this locker room, you're looking around, you're seeing each other getting dressed, and you're going, let's go, it's home opener. These are the memories that you're going to remember. These are the times, okay? You're taping your stick, you're taping your pads, you got the tunes going, you're warming up, Dr. Jeff's getting you dialed. All right, you get out there, you start warming up, shooting some pucks around. These are the memories that you're going to cherish, all right? And that's what keeps you coming back. And when you get to see alumni out here supporting you on opening night, it's truly something special. All right, but let's get back to business now. Our game was built on speed, strength, and hitting, and, and shooting pucks, all right? When we get away from that, that's not our true identity, we're not gonna play to that strength. It's our home opener, feel it, get the emotions, have the energy, and come out using it, ready to fucking be fired up. Okay, boys, let's go, on Sippy. The puck drops and the game is underway. It does not take long for the Rams to seize control. Brandon Hughes, one of the talented rookies, scores the opening goal, igniting the crowd and setting the tone for the evening. All by himself now will be Brandon Hughes, who fires and he scores! It's Brandon Hughes, short-handed, Farmingdale strikes first, it's 1-0. Um, I thought we sent a message, especially after that Fordham game. We were, uh, you know, we came together as a team and, you know, we just let it all out there on the ice. The Rams are not content with just one, they're hungry for more. 
McGregor walks, bluffs, fires, deflected over the body, and it goes in! Luciano Signoretti tips it over the body of Shouter, and it's 2-0 Farmingdale. Farmingdale the other way. It's Bone backhand pass in front, and they score! Pick up off the turnover, McCann trying to do it himself, he's got space, goes five hole, and he scores! The Rams are not satisfied, they want to dominate. John McCann extends their lead with an individual effort for the fourth goal. It'll be McCann, he has a goal tonight, finds Hawkins, walks in, fires, save made, rebound, and they score! Final buzzer sounds, the Rams stand tall, celebrating their own opener victory. Yeah, I think it was a great first opening weekend. Uh, there's a lot of new guys in the room, and over the course of their career, they're going to have many opportunities to win conference championships. They may hoist it a couple of times. There are going to be many trips to nationals. But a new guy in the room, they're only going to have that first home opener, that first home opener weekend. And I think that's something truly powerful. Uh, playing against Marist after beating him a couple weeks ago is, is a little bit of a test mentally. Um, sometimes you look past the team, it's hard to beat them twice. And I thought we did a good job staying in the moment, playing against those guys on Friday and not worrying about the next day going into that Quinnipiac game. This game held a special significance as it coincided with the Garen Hagen Memorial game. In his honor, they have retired the jersey number 23, ensuring Hagen's legacy lives on. When and where did you first meet Garen and become teammates? Uh, so it was my first year of travel uh, in Long Beach Lightning. You know, uh, he what's it called, my first year trying out for the team and he was definitely one of the first kids that came up to me and you know, introduced himself and you know, seemed like, you know, just an overall great kid. So, you know, he was definitely one of my first connections in Long Beach when I first arrived there. And then it carried on for the years previous when I, you know, moved up on the Long Beach team, 16U. And then even when I went to 18U with Ed G, you know, he came with me. So, you know, we were still teammates throughout that whole year. Uh, me and Garen played on the Long Island Gulls last year uh, for our 18U team for a triple A. So I first met Garen uh, 14s for hockey. And um, I remember we had a team builder outside playing some roller hockey. And Garen was one of the kids there. And I remember pissing him off, calling him the wrong name the entire skate. And um, we really bonded throughout the year. Um, he was like the rock on the blue line that we really needed. And we had a fantastic year. And he was like the catalyst of that. Can you share a memorable moment or game you had in playing alongside you? Yeah, one of my uh, fondest memories ever in my hockey career was um, my first ever travel win with Garen. He was uh, the first kid who jumped on top of me and gave me a huge bear hug. And um, it was really cool to see like how happy they were for me and like how happy we were as a team for the success. And um, you know, I'll forever be grateful for the memories. Um. It wasn't really in a game, it was before the locker room where he showed us a little tattoo on his leg that nobody knew about. And then the coach walked in and thought he was naked. So he turned around and he showed him the tattoo. Such a funny moment. Uh, definitely, what's it called? Definitely the game, one of the games against Beijing. Uh, we were down 4-2 late and then uh, we went up. We came back and tied the game and definitely, you know, I scored the game tying goal, so you know. He uh, came up and hugged me after, you know, it was an you know, exciting moment. That's definitely one of my, you know, one of the memories, of, you know, one of the many memories we got, so. This is an absolute tremendous honor, uh, the way you've chosen to memorialize our son, Garen. Um, we are completely humbled. He never wore the sweater here. Uh, I want you to know that on Je you know, Garen was hit uh, on January 12th. On January 13th, uh, January 3rd, he was invited uh, uh, by the organization to skate with you guys. And, um, he skated real well and he felt good about how he performed. But it wasn't just th that 
that made him want to want to be a Ram with you guys. It was the way you treated him. It was the way you made him feel welcome. And he, he knew that he, he could fit here, and he knew that he could contribute. His plan, um, when he walked out of here, was to be prepared uh, as best he could be. He decided, I know he decided that night. He didn't tell me until two days before he passed. We had a nice conversation, and he said, I've decided that I want to go to Farmville. He was accepted here, um, and I want to play with those guys. Um, he, his plan was to continue to skate through the spring, and the summer work out like crazy. He's a lifeguard. He's gonna. He wanted to come into your camp in absolute hockey shape. Darren knew what it meant and what what commitment means. He was a leader on and off the ice for his high school teams and his goals teams, the captain. And uh, he just wanted to be part of you. You guys. He 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 admired you. He watched you, and and he knew that he could be part of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Darren knew. Uh, what it takes to, to be part of a team. He was committed to any team that he was on. He knows how much, we know how much, how big of a game this is. We wish you the best. We know you're gonna kill it. Thank you very, very much for having us. Uh, we are tremendously humbled. Thanks, guys. All right, guys, go Rams. All right. Just to piggyback off that, okay? That's pretty powerful stuff. All right, Mr. Hagen said not too long ago we sat in this locker room. I sat right where Devin was. I believe they sat right here in the chairs. And being able to speak to them and talk to them about the family atmosphere and what Farmingdale is, and some of you in this room were able to meet him, tap him on the pads, welcome him, let him get dressed. And it's very unfortunate what happened, okay? But we feel like this is the best thing that we could do to honor him and keep him going, okay? So I know they have this saying, it's gonna be love like Garen, Live like Aaron, and tonight, you guys are going to play like Aaron. Let's go, boys. Let's go. Farmingdale State took the ice in a highly anticipated showdown against Quinnipiac University. Jake Russo had two goals in that 6 nothing win, as that one's fought off, and they score! The first period saw an electrifying start when Eric Immel, at 17.48, scored his first goal of the season off a rebound to set the tone. Moving into the second period with defenseman Riley McGregor netting his first collegiate goal. McGregor towards the cage, and they score! It's Riley McGregor from the blue line! Game against Quinnipiac was uh, the one I'm going to remember for the rest of my life. That game, it was more than a game, and the boys really came through and we, uh, we dominated that night. Late in the third period, on a late hit, Michael Larico sustained an injury and was forced to leave the game. This game served as a meaningful opportunity to remember Garen Hagen while showcasing the team's skill and unity. The legacy of a promising player lives on, and the Rams celebrated his spirit with a victory that he would surely have been proud of. Uh, it was definitely pretty special. There was a good crowd, you know, you know, great way to honor uh, Garen. We wanted to send a message, and uh, we came out, played hard, aggressive, and you know we jumped on a big lead, and then you know we never looked back. So, game against Quinnipiac, they're a lot bigger team, but our boys handled it well. I mean, they played really well, played smart and hard. So, what are your thoughts or goals for the next upcoming game against Quinnipiac? Goals are keep it simple, get the puck deep, just play hard. The journey to North Ford, Connecticut was taxing, with immense traffic on a Friday afternoon, but the Rams were determined to make it count as they faced Quinnipiac University, seeking victories against two divisional opponents over the weekend. The goal is just to you know, stick to the systems and do everything right, and just keep playing the way we're playing. I think it's the same goal every game. Play as a team, play hard, play fast, shoot pucks, have special teams going. I just think at this point in the season, it's early. We got a couple first game, two game weekend under our belt. Uh, starting this week, we have some injuries right off the rip. Uh, we got some people sick, some people out. So it's going to be good to see how our depth takes place early on this season. 
The game kicked off with Quinnipiac setting the tempo, striking first and putting the Rams on notice. But Farmingdale was quick to respond with a goal of their own, even in the score. The battle transformed into a captivating back and forth duel, with both teams exchanging goals and the excitement mounting. The game remained deadlock at four as it ventured into overtime. In a thrilling finish, Quinnipiac secured the win with a rebound goal in the extra frame, leaving the Rams eager to regroup and seek success in the upcoming matchups. Back for the home, back for the opening game of the season at Marist, we talked about our job, right? We said we were at base camp, and our goal at the end of the season was to get to the top of the mountain. All right, this is game six. You have five games played, you have three wins, two overtime losses. All right, so those five milestones up that mountain, we basically did what we needed to do with two little setbacks, but not complete. For those of you in the room that aren't aware, okay, this is your first time playing against Fairfield, okay? Any game against Fairfield is a huge rivalry. There's a lot of hitting, a lot of shit talking, and a lot on the line, okay? Embrace it, have fun, enjoy it, and welcome to the rivalry. You get your shit on tonight, you get a good warm up in, and it's welcome to Farmingdale fucking hockey. You're in black, have fun with it. Welcome to the Farmingdale Fairfield rivalry. You got one lap left and we're fucking on the ice, boys. Let's go. In the world of college hockey, there's a unique bond that emerges when fierce rivals meet on the ice. This Saturday, Farmingdale State College and Fairfield University clashed in a showdown that transcended competition. It was about history, passion, and redemption. The Rams found themselves in a tough spot early in the game. Fairfield came out strong, outplaying them in the first period. As the second period began, Fairfield University added to their lead, making it two to nothing, but the Rams were not ready to back down. Sean O'Donnell seized on a one-timing pass from Tim Duffy to narrow the gap to 2-1. The back and forth drama continued as Fairfield scored again to make it 3-1. But the Rams showed their tenacity with Jason Brennan pouncing on a rebound and tucking it past the goaltender Dillner to bring the game to 3-2. Dylan Bridgewood added to the excitement, scoring on a shot on the low glove side to make it 3-3. The game remained in the balance. Fairfield University answered once more, retaking the lead at 4-3, but the Rams would just not go away, as Tim Duffy would find the back of the net leveling the score at 4-4. After fighting from behind all game, Matthew Hawkins capitalized on a one-timing pass from Luciano Signoretti, giving the Rams a 5-4 lead. Through it all, Rams goaltender Jake Temkin made an incredible 41 saves to ensure the Rams' triumph. This game was a true showcase of determination, skill, and rivalry. It was about making a statement and proving that redemption was not just a word, but a mission. Fuck you right! Ah! That's a team fucking win. You waited, you fucking found it. You dug down deep, you play with your heart, you play with your balls, and that's how it fucking goes. Fuck you should right. be fucking proud, baby. Everyone in this room, whether you got ice time or you didn't, you were rowdy on the fucking bench, and we were there for your fucking teammates. There was a lot to learn, a lot to be proud of, but guess what? We're fucking back to work Tuesday, and here comes fucking Georgia this weekend. Hey! Be safe, get fucking home. The roads are wet. Take your fucking time, but you should be proud of yourselves. Enjoy, all right? I think our key was bouncing back after that rough first period. I feel like we were caught on our heels a little bit. Um, I feel like we came out, bounced back, popped right back in the game in the second period, and then the third period came around and we were rolling and we, we secured it. We were just a better team at that point. I'm just always ready to play. When we play Fairfield, I'm just... I'm locked. I'm just locked. I was saying before the game I was going to score my first. I haven't scored previous to that. I didn't score the season yet, so I was saying in the locker room I was going to score. I just always bring it against Fairfield. It, it means a lot. 
it's just another step in the right direction. I mean, we want to be a national championship team, so it's one more step in the right direction. It feels really good. Um, I think that it's something that we were pulling for. So to come out and, you know, we were down too. So to come out and come back, I think it was a really big moment for the team. I think, you know, every win is key because as you know, you know, we want to be the national champions this year. So every win is a step forward. You know, we're going to look back and at key times, you know, you have to tell yourself, I can do this. So every win is a bigger motivator to the final step, I think. The University of Georgia's hockey program has been making waves in the college hockey world. Last season at the AAU National Championships, they captured league-wide attention as they defied the odds, defeating St. Bonaventure University, the top-seeded team, in a nail-biting overtime match. This stunning victory propelled them to the quarterfinals, leaving a lasting mark on the tournament. As they fly up to face Farmingdale State College in back-to-back -back games on October 20th and the 21st, the Sage is set for a thrilling showdown between two hockey powerhouses. During Thursday's on-ice practice, the team announced assistant captains for the season. Junior Tim Duffy, junior Daniel Rotan, senior Ethan Bohm, and senior Ryan Murray were all named to the leadership roles. It's definitely a great honor uh, that my teammates look at me like that. I, I like how uh, they see me as a leader and uh, definitely want to lead them, be there for all of them. They all know that they have me and a huge honor to wear an A this year on my sweater. So my leadership style is one that I like. Uh, I like to go hard when we're on the ice, but I also like that we're all together off the ice. Um, I like to get all the guys together, help them out where it's needed, whether that's in the rink, outside the rink with anything they need. Um, and the guys know that they always got me, uh, whether it's hockey related or not, and I'll always have their backs as well. I think it's a great feeling, you know, having the boys back you up and the coaching staff actually let you be a leader on this team. It's definitely a good feeling. My leadership style, uh, I don't really know. I guess yelling a lot is my leadership style. Uh, and uh, yeah, hopefully that works. It's an absolute honor to be able to wear an A for this team. Uh, I've been here for four or five years now, and never once did I think that it would be an option for me. I've only worn an A one time in my career, and that was for high school. Um, so for my teammates to, to vote me as an assistant captain, it's an incredible honor. And I'm very humble about it, but we got to show it on the ice now. I like to be vocal on the bench. Um, I don't like to be quiet. If someone messes up, obviously I'll go, not like in a yelling matter, like go over, talk to them. Just be there for him after a tough shift because I've been there. Um, but also now, now that I have an A, I got to show it on the ice. So if I'm going to tell someone to do something, I got to be able to do it. Yeah, it means a lot. I, I've been here for a while, so I've been down the roads. I just hope I can show them the way to get there. I'm a pretty, guy, I'm a pretty quiet guy in the locker room, I'll be honest. But uh, I think on the ice, I show pretty good examples about, again, how to lead the team just on the ice, how to play your role, and that's it. The Farmingdale State Rams were set to face off against the University of Georgia for a back-to-back -back weekend series, and it was a tale of contrasting outcomes. In the first game, the Rams showcased their offense in a well-coordinated line of Michael Larico, Tim Duffy, and Sean O'Donnell. Larico's return to the ice held a special significance as he battled back from an injury suffered in a game against Quinnipiac, followed by a bout of illness. His presence made a noticeable impact as he, alongside his line mates, contributed to each of the team's three goals in a 3-3 tie. However, the second night of the back-to-back -back series told a different story. Farmingdale seemed to struggle with a slow and sluggish start and a lack of offensive energy throughout the game. Unacceptable. Tactically, they backed three guys up on the blue line. See, I'm an X's and O's guy. So when they backed up three, they sent two at full tilt. And it's tough, and it's frustrating because you get doubled every time you touch the puck. 
You're going to have to match the intensity. You have the best coaching staff. I try to give everything we have, everything to build this opportunity for you and for future players here. But there's been too many injuries, too much blood, too much sweat for you to feel sorry about yourself after a bad 20 minutes. You lose eight in a row, that's a different story. That's a bad 20 minutes. They were shut out 4-0 to Georgia with only 12 shots on net. With that loss behind them, Farmingdale eyes another matchup against Fairfield. Um, I think this weekend showed us really that uh, we need to work on every aspect of the game. Uh, I thought it was an embarrassing performance the whole weekend all the way around. Um, offensive, defensive zone, really need to work on that. Um, and our neutral zone pressure as well. There was no heart to it, um, so we dump a puck in deep and we kind of just watch, give them an easy breakout. Um, like Spears says all the time, that's an easy team to play against and we don't want to be an easy team to play against. I think it really helped us to play such a good team like them and to get us prepared for the following games and the following games that we have for the remaining of the season. I think we have a really good schedule this year. It's going to get us set for nationals. Um, I think we just, as a team, I think we can move, we can move pucks better. Um, you know, we, we got to play as a five-man unit. Um, you know, I think that that's one of our strengths is that we have we have a deep roster and we, we have a good team. And I, I really don't think we have a weak link. But you know, that that in turn means we need everybody. I feel bad for the team in this league. It's not right to you guys. I don't give a fuck how many times you want to bang your sticks or how much we want to scream. You let me worry about the fucking refs. I've never heard of that in my life unless it was the end of a period with like zero seconds I've seen that done. I've never seen that done at the time of the call. You know? Okay. Have a good day.